Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today, I wanted to do a second part to my Nina Advanced Sequencer video. One of our community members did bring up that uh, there are a couple of uh, instructions, triggers, and looping conditions that can be very useful for building a sequence. And I wanted to take a few minutes and go over those. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn about some commonly used triggers, looping conditions, and instructions within Nina's Advanced Sequencer. So now that we know how to set up a sequence using Nina's Advanced Sequencer, I just wanted to take a few minutes and go through some triggers, looping conditions, and instructions that could actually be pretty useful during your imaging session. So under triggers, if we click the plus sign, we have all triggers that are available to us. Now, when we look at autofocus, we see several options here. Personally, I only use autofocus after HFR increase. And the reason for that, as the temperature changes throughout the night, what happens is our OTA will start to shrink as temperature cools down. On the flip side, if temperature increases for some reason, our OTA will expand. Now, knowing about back focus, and if you haven't seen my back focus videos, make sure to check them out. Back focus is the process that we use to line our camera sensor up with the focal plane. And we do that by either racking the focuser in or out and also adjusting with spacers. As our OTA decreases size or increases size, we're moving our camera sensor away from the critical focal zone. And what happens is our image starts coming out of focus. And we see that through the HFR value. So the reason that I only autofocus after HFR increase is that is paying attention to the size of the stars, which will be affected through any focus changes. Now, you can focus after a set amount of exposures. I find that personally to be a little bit unnecessary because the HFR increase will take care of that for us. And also autofocusing after a temperature change is a little bit redundant because the HFR increase takes care of that for us. I used to autofocus after a set amount of time as well, and what I noticed is a lot of unnecessary autofocus runs, and that's because you may have just gone through an autofocus due to HFR increase, but then the timer runs out and you autofocus again just a, a, a subframe or two after it just seems a little bit unnecessary. I've had zero issues with HFR increase. Now, if you are running monochrome with a filter wheel, you do want to autofocus after filter change. So this is a very good trigger to use if you're doing monochrome with a filter wheel. Now, we've already gone over dithering after exposures. I'm not using a dome. Um, so I'm not going to go over dome. Now, a couple of things that would actually be very beneficial, especially if you've been doing this for a while, you've probably been there, you wake up in the morning and you go out to your computer and you realize your target is way off center. And that happens, especially if clouds roll in, you lose your guiding and you have a drift, depending on how good your mount tracks. Now, having a center after drift trigger will prevent that. So what we would do is we would add a center after drift trigger, and we can analyze it after so many exposures. You can do an, an uh, analysis after two exposures, three exposures, five exposures, whatever you want to set that to. So what'll happen is Nina will end up every 
you know, in this case, five exposures, evaluate the drift. And if any drift has occurred, Nina will pause the imaging, recenter your target based off of the target information that you have set that we learned how to put in in the previous video. And the amount of drift that Nina will accept is set with this little box right here. So you can put in how much drift you will allow. Now, one thing to keep in mind too is dithering. Dithering is an intentional drift in the image. That's the simplest way to think about it. So, you know, you may want to use, you know, five or 10 arc minutes and every five exposures, if your target has drifted, in this case, five arc minutes, Nina will pause the imaging, recenter, and then go about the rest of the sequence. This is very good to have, especially now with all of the clouds that we seem to have. You know, you, you want to just get some imaging done and you go and risk the clouds. You lose the target for a little bit. The clouds clear. You're off center. Nina will pick up on that and go ahead and recenter. Another important trigger to use when you are using center after drift is going to be restore guiding. After Nina recenters, you want to make sure to restore the guiding so that then you stay on track. Now, going under loop conditions, we've already touched base on loop for iterations. You can loop for a time span. So let's say you want to loop for two hours. You can put in two hours and then um, Nina will go ahead and loop your sequence for two hours or whatever time frame you want to put in there. Now, you can loop until the altitude is below. I mentioned this um, in the previous video. You can set uh, in a specific altitude that you want to loop until. Let's say you have trees or houses that are in the way and um, those trees or houses start at 30 degrees altitude. You may want to loop until your target hits 40 degrees altitude. And then once your target hits 40 degrees altitude, Nina will stop the loop and either end the sequence or go on to the next target in the sequence if you have one set up. So that's a very useful um, looping condition. Now, another one that would be very useful would be loop until time. I touched base on this in the previous video. Uh, in my case, I have M101 until about 1.20 in the morning. So I would set 1.20. Nina will loop my target until 1.20 in the morning, then either end the sequence or move on to the next target if I have one set. Keep in mind, this is a 24-hour clock. So, for example, if you want 10 p.m., you're going to want to name this 2200. If you put 10 in here, Nina will loop until 10 in the morning. So make sure you're careful with the time that you set. With loop until time, we see a drop down menu. We can loop until sunset. We can loop until nautical dust, astronomical dust, astronomical dawn, and nautical dawn. We can loop until sunrise, or we can just loop until meridian. Looping until Meridian would be very useful, especially if you do not have Meridian Flip set up in Nina. If you need help setting up Meridian Flip, check out my video. I go over how to do that within Nina. So make sure to choose the um, appropriate loop until time. If you want time, obviously just select time. Otherwise, you can go ahead and select any one of the drop downs. For instance, if we select nautical dust, it'll show us exactly what time Nina will loop until. Now, we also have loop while altitude above horizon. If you have a clear view as far as the eye can see and the horizon is within range, you can absolutely loop until the uh, target is just above horizon, at which point Nina will stop the sequence and move on. 
either with uh, going on to another target if you choose to do that, or just go ahead and park the mount and uh, end the sequence. Now, another one that we would be uh, interested in would be instructions. So if we go to the plus sign with instructions and we go to utility, we have several options here that would be useful for us. We can start our sequence at specific times. We can wait for the altitude to be a certain uh, height. For example, uh, we'll take my house for example. My house in uh, relation to my telescope location puts me at not being able to image until a target is roughly 45 degrees altitude. So I would go ahead and um, enter in 45 degrees. Notice here, altitude greater than 45 degrees. Click the drop down. If we do altitude less than 45 degrees, we may have some issues, so make sure this is set up correctly. We also have within our toolbox, wait for time, which I demonstrated in the other video. We can wait until a specific time, or in the dropdown, we can choose one of these options, just like we did just a moment ago. And then within utility, we can wait for a time span. So we can wait so many seconds, which who wants to calculate seconds between 8.58 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. But if seconds uh, does fall within a reasonable limit, you can absolutely set that. And then um, one other thing to keep in mind, when you set one of these, make sure this instruction, if you're trying to have the sequence wait until a specific moment or time, make sure that this instruction is at the top of the list within your sequence. These are sequential instructions, so putting this at the top of the list ensures that this is the first instruction that Nina will execute. We don't want to slew to a target if it's not within view. So just a couple of things to keep in mind, a couple of common things that we would be using, and I just wanted to go over them really quick. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Throw a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Do you have any questions? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.